Hi, and on today's video, I'm going to cover off the art of using an application called BlueStacks 5 to emulate an Android on your standard PC. Now, this guide will work for Windows 10, Windows 11. It will also work for different versions of chipsets. So if you've got a Intel or an AMD, I can cover them both off. However, what I can't do is go into the individual settings of everybody's BIOS because that varies massively between manufacturers. Now, the reason we might want to do this is, say for example, you know, you, you might be an iPhone user, God help you, and you want to actually come to the power side of the, the, the world of mobile technology and go with Android. You don't want that nice, easy, toming, let's just go approach. And you want a little bit of confusion and, and various other bits. But Android's certainly the way to go. It is a more powerful platform, let's be honest. But, you may also want it for mobile gaming, if you want to play a game on your machine. Or you might want it for testing and development. Certainly, testers and developers, if they're building an application out um, as an APK, for example, would certainly want the ability to actually emulate onto their machine and, and do the testing. Now, the reason I've been asked to do this video is a good friend of mine who's been playing Mafia City. He wanted to get his setup onto the big screen because as you do it on your phone, it, you can be all fingers and thumbs, and most of the spelling is atrocious, to the point of nobody can read it and it's not legible. Pretty much like my spelling most of the time. But what I wanted to be able to do is kind of show them how to do this, and also it kind of helps you guys. I do a lot on virtualization technology anyway, so why not do it on virtualizing Android? Now there is one key thing to mention here. If you do not turn the virtualization technology on in your BIOS, you will get a blue screen. So be warned, that step needs to happen before you install BlueStacks 5. Now there are other products out there apart from BlueStacks 5. I just happen to find BlueStacks 5 to be the most simplest to work and set up. So let's get started. What I'll do is cover off how to do the technology in the BIOS. Hopefully I can do a couple of captures. I do have an Intel device here and an AMD one. So I can kind of show you a little bit of the difference between the two. You will hear the term VTX or VTD, that usually stands for Intel, and AMD's kind of varies, but the most latest reincarnation is SMR, but it's all just to do with virtualization technology. So if you're not sure how to enable virtualization technology on your device, consult your manufacturer's guide. If you've got a you know, a Lenovo or a Dell or something like that, you should better find that information online. If you've obviously built a custom built machine, you will need to reference your motherboard. And please also note that not every single CPU will support virtualization technology. However, it has been supported for many, many years now. So the likelihood is it certainly will do. So let's stay tuned. So unfortunately, there's not always a simple, hard and fast way of capturing a BIOS. Um, a lot of the capture cards will basically cut off because they don't see a video signal at this point. So what I've done is I've just logged in to the BIOS of this Dell device. And you can probably tell there's a few settings down this side, but nothing that kind of gives away anything about virtualization or advanced CPU functions. So what I'm going to need to do is just flick on that. And now when I flick that on, you will now see there's a virtualization support. So within virtualization support, thankfully it's already turned on on this device. So you can see here straight away, you've got Intel virtualization technology. And you can see there's different technology and terminology they use. And also the direct IO. Now the reason the direct IO is turned on is if you then go and plug a device in, so a USB stick, for example, it can directly pass through that device. So on this machine, it's actually previously installed, which comes in really handy. So I could actually go through the installation process on this machine, which I might well do. I will take it straight off afterwards because I don't plan to use this device, but on mine, you can see it's turned on. So the majority of times you will find these kind of settings under advanced. And again, your mileage will vary. It's really simple on some of the you know well-known brands like Dell, Lenovo. It's normally quite easy to find. Again, just consult your documentation. Okay, so if I took an AMD, for example, at the moment you can see this is just in easy mode. So it's not going to give us the settings we want. The very bottom there, it says F7 
for advanced mode. Now F7 on my son's machine is a little bit awkward because he's got all these stupid ducky keyboards. Right, <clears throat> so what we're going to be looking for here is advanced. So if we use the mouse, which again is super hypersensitive, and we go to advanced, we should be able to find in here the part about CPU, and it should be under CPU configuration, I believe. So let's have a look. Again, he's got a really awkward keyboard. And there we are, look, so SVM support at the bottom there. You can see it's currently disabled. So for his, to make it work, all we need to do is turn that on. So enable that technology. And then just do a, usually it's F10, save to exit. SMT mode will most likely, I think if we hover over that, will be about doing multi-threaded, which we don't need to worry about. So I should just be able to do an F10 and exit, or exit and save. Save changes and reset, and his will be good to go. You can see it's just confirming the changes of SMV mode being from enabled to disabled, and then his would work. So let's now look at installing BlueStacks 5 onto a Windows 11 device. And all I'm going to do is go to the BlueStacks website. I would highly recommend making sure you only get it from the official BlueStacks website. As with most applications, if you don't, you might get some nasty surprises on additional software installed that you don't necessarily want. Now, I have sped this video up a little bit. It will take a few minutes to install. I was doing this on my wireless connection rather than hardwired, so it probably isn't as quick as it would be normally, but it doesn't take particularly long. Now, one of the things that you'll notice as part of this installation goes on is that it will mention about Hyper-V. Now, we will need to enable that. Now, there's many ways to do it. These days, Hyper-V doesn't necessarily come with... Um, Windows 11 or Windows 10 it has to be installed separately. Probably one of the easiest ways of doing it is actually just to follow the guides that BlueStacks give you themselves. I will certainly just do it using the command prompt. It will ask you to reboot. And as part of the installation, you will notice it says something around the permissions for the users not being set up. So as this loads up, it says there, grant and restart. Don't do this at this point. Just wait until the starting thing has kind of got to the end once you've got to the end you can click grant and restart but it certainly won't solve everything you need to do we will need to install and make sure hyper-v is accessible by the machine which we'll do right now right so the first time you try and run it you will get an error to say that hyper-v is not installed or it can't access it or to run as administrator to solve the problem now we do need to install Hyper-V anyway. So if you click on the guide of how to do it and then go down to command prompt, the best one is just to copy this command here. Control C if you want, or just copy it that way. And then we'll open command prompt. Now you will need to run this in advanced mode or in elevated permissions. You'll notice I didn't that time. We'll go back in. All you need to do to do that is right click on command prompt and then run as administrator. And that will give you the advanced settings. You won't see my UAC prompt. But then what we can do is just paste that in, hit enter, and it will grab everything it needs to do to run. So if I click enter on here now, what do is just install the dependencies and then ask you to reboot. So enable the features, pull them all down that it needs to do, and then all you need to do is click Y to reboot your machine. Rebooted, let's just come back in and you'll see it come up with incompatibility settings again. And the reason for this is, is that I'm just not running it the very first time in administrator mode. So all we need to do is right click, run as administrator. Again, you'll get UAC prompt and then it will run. Now, from what I understand is it's just a one-time thing this. I can certainly run uh, BlueStacks 5 now without running it as admin mode. If you do find you still have that problem, then you can get around it by just running it as administrator. Um, it does seem to be some weird challenges sometimes about Hyper-V side, so if you do have that problem, just run it this way. 
but this will absolutely work now. Now, the one thing to note with this is dependent upon, you know, the kind of game or whatever you want to run, you are going to have to link a Google account or some other account that can access the Play Store. So if you've really got one, great. You can go off and use that. Apart from that, go and create one. And the good part about this is it actually works like a phone. So realistically, you can drag and drop stuff on there. There are ways to copy and paste into the file size so that you can upload photos, etc. But yeah, just install the game. So there we are. We've covered off how to install BlueStacks 5. Now, my primary use case for mine was to play Mafia City. Slightly addicted. Um, but the key to that is to make sure that you've followed the guide from start to finish, make sure that you've enabled Hyper-V, and to make sure that you've also turned on your VTD, etc. It's quite a simple, straightforward video. It's quite an easy process to go through. It's useful for the fact that you can then use you know, a full scale size keyboard and a mouse just to control what you're doing. Um, but yeah, that was great. I mean, a, a big thanks to the people that kind of, you know, egged me on to do this video because they were asking the question about how they do this themselves. So I might drop some little hints in the uh, video. I'll see you next time. Hit the like and subscribe.